Okay, so Kings here. Again, NL50, one limper. So the bet that we make right here is a so-called isolation raise. And again, textbook would have been four times the big blind plus one per limper. Ah, four is also fine. And Queen 10 suited decides to cold call us. I've got it set such that um, the hands are shown. So if we get down to a showdown and you see an opponent's hand, that's why. Good, so we get two over callers. Uh, so this would be a limp, isolation two bet, or an isolation raise, cold caller, over cold caller, and he lets it go. Now, we flop, I mean, it's not the nuts, because actually a four, four of a kind tens is the nuts here. Rainbow board paired, and we flop the overset, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, over full. So that means our king's full of tens. And we're really hoping that somebody, <laughs> namely one of these two guys, has the ten and pays us out the nose till the river. He and I are both big stacked. Okay, we've got well over 100 big blinds. And this guy's, yeah, just flaming here. Um, yeah, just enormous fish playing every other hand, uh, raising every ninth or eighth, and has no idea. So this is not a professional short stacker, this is a fish <laughs> short stacker. So, good. Pot is 725, and action is on us, and we check it. Okay. Now, you can opt to bet into that. Just make your standard C bet, uh, as you would also when you miss that flop. And you can also check it, because this guy's small. He might make that, he might push all in here, and you get that extra value. It's the idea of a check with two players behind you when you flop, you know, more or less than nuts. Right, I mean, flopping a four of a kind tens. If somebody flopped the tens, you can just say good hand. You're gonna be pl you're going for broke with this kind of hand, regardless. So there's nothing to protect against, right? Um, better case would even be if uh, if this king were, let's say, okay, that wouldn't work with ours. Let's say um, let's say the ten were a club. All right, then somebody could be on a on a flush draw. He could also be on a, a straight draw. Uh, and, you know, you could just have the bare 10. So what could happen is, when you see these two suited boards and you've already got this full house, um, sometimes you can, you can check call, you can play this kind of check call move to build the pot, so you're slow playing here, right, as we had mentioned in the last video, um, and hope that they then hit uh, either, you know, queen in this example, or that they complete their flush or their straight, and then end up paying paying you off. Um, he's not going to put me on kings here, of course. It's highly unlikely, seeing as how he's got the ten. He might be putting me on ace-king, right, or king-queen, king-jack, stuff like that. Um, it's a highly unlikely flop, and as mentioned, highly unlikely flops um, in these so-called cooler situations where he flops a set and we flop the full house. Uh, that's very often where stacks are lost. So Unlikely means dangerous and also very lucrative. <laughs> And if you're on this side of the table, of course, very, very expensive. So we check, and he then makes a bet. Because he's, what he's doing right here is also building the pot. You know, he's putting me on maybe a king, maybe any other pair. Um, yeah, and he bets out half pot. Give me exactly 3 to 1 odds, so I need 25% equity, right, to break even in the long run if I were on a draw. Let's say I had jack queen. Yep. Um, which wouldn't be enough for an open-ended straight draw, but would be very, very close. So in this case, again, I want this guy to get in there, right? I want to increase that value, so I just call it. So I don't check raise here to scare anybody off. I check call, and this guy, the fish, unfortunately folds, and we lose that money. Good, and now there's the two. Okay, and here I make a small bet, basically a little over a third of the pot to try and build it up again because if we don't get some more money in at this point um, then it's not gonna you know there's it's very unlikely that I'm gonna be able to get him to stack off if he doesn't have the 10 say um, so I make a small bet here which he can call right if he is again on um, yeah any 10 of course um, Jack Queen etc and yeah and in his position actually with the 10 if he does think that I might be on Queen Jack for example um, then he should raise that up and see what happens.
and he only calls. So he, on, okay, from his perspective, he's also slow playing, right? So he doesn't want to scare me off at this point. So that's what he's thinking. Um, he's got the ten, and now you know two rags on the turn in the river. He's thinking that didn't help me at all. I'm probably on the king, and he's got the best hand. So yeah, not to knock his play actually in the spot. Um, we make then again a sizable value bet here. Um, hoping that he is on that 10 at uh, yeah, two thirds pot size more or less and he then I believe comes over the top yeah so that's just fantastic and that's how that's how you can plan a hand from the beginning to the end uh, slow plan the turn in the river right and getting it all in I'm sorry the, the flop in the turn and getting it all in on the river an example of slow playing and pot manipulation to increase the total pot size Okay, so here we're in the small blind with eights, and what we're doing here is uh, again NL50. So this guy's at um, 50 big blinds, and we're super super deep at that point, and we're calling here for set value. You could also argue for a three bet here with eights, um, but we decide just for a call and want to see that eight, and it hits. So um, again non-suited, relatively non-connected board. Um, again, you know, your 10 jacks as an open raise, or your 6-7s uh, suited maybe, uh, open raising. Uh, that's, you yeah, that's possible, and giving him a free card is a bit risky, but what we do here is, since he has the initiative, we go ahead and check it and give him the chance to make his standard c-bet. So, he does, and he makes a respectable c-bet. Um, two-thirds pot size is standard. It's pretty much textbook on his point. You know, he missed the flop. Goes ahead and makes a two-thirds c-bet, representing an overpair. And, yeah, he's going to take that down a lot. And in this case, we have this monster flop. We flopped our set of eights, and we just call. It's, again, slow playing on a non-suited board, relatively unconnected. All right, now the king hits. King of diamonds. So now it's two-suited, and we make kind of a teasing bet, right, representing that we might have the king, um, giving him a chance to come over the top. This is actually a bit dangerous, okay? So there's now two suited boards here, and if he is on a hand exactly like the one he is on, um, yeah, he's got he's got really good odds, 4 to 1 odds to call that just for the flush itself. So this is a bit of a mista uh, mistake. It's too small. We should, I mean, if we're going to go ahead and, and donk into him, in this position, uh, which was essentially an out of position float, then we need to go ahead and make that again two thirds to at least half pot size. Okay. Um, anyways, we make the smallish bet, hoping that he's going to come over the top, and he only calls as he should with that hand. Um, so we, yeah, we actually got into some trouble there with that smallish bet. Uh, just to give you guys uh, an idea of what floating is, so that was a pre flop action. He raise it here in middle position with the suited ace 10 we cold call it in the small blind flopper set and check it out of position he bets it so we check call we check call the flop out of position turn comes and we bet so it's a so called out of position float even though the bet size was a bit too small so we bet into it and again way too small he's getting way too good uh, way too good at pot odds here at 4 to 1 he can call basically yeah I can even call open in straight draws almost, uh, given implied odds. And yeah, so he does that, and luckily it yeah, doesn't hit. But that, uh, you know, 7-10, okay, he's not going to be playing 7-10 on this. Um, but we go ahead and make a, a value bet on the end. And it's one of those things where I think he's going to pay me off with a king, right, or maybe any other pair. And yeah, so I go ahead and make that bet. This is what do we have here? Yeah, a little over a little over two thirds. And the fact that this guy, I think he even calls. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. At that point he missed, he should have saved the thirteen dollars, right, the twenty six big blinds, and he kept that in his bankroll. And this is one of the situations where you don't want to be calling down with ace high after that kind of action. So I basically floated the turn, so I check, called the flop, bet into him on the turn and then made a very substantial, much larger bet on the river. And, yeah, 
that's just a really bad call. I mean, with the king, you can maybe understand calling that, but uh, here is just ridiculous. So don't do that, guys. Save your money. Chip saved is a chip earned, as the adage goes. And we take down the pot since we're playing a guy who apparently had little idea. So here, big stacked. We're playing in a 100, and I open raised to three and a half big blinds with sixes. So what is this doing? This is widening my range from under the gun. So it means when I raise this amount with aces and kings, uh, if we were to get to a showdown here, you know they're going to have seen me play also um, small middle pairs, maybe suited connectors, uh, decent aces, broadways, stuff like that, also from early position. So, you know, stuff to change up your play. This is normally a fold. <laughs> uh, this is a bit advanced play. Um, when you have history on people, for example, uh, two and a half thousand hands over here, 1.4 here, etc. Um, good. So I go ahead and raise my sixes, just like I'll raise my aces from time to time. Uh, again, this wasn't a four big blind raise, but a three and a half. And to be totally consistent, should have been, of course, four. Unless, yeah, you can also pick guys. You can pick yourself, of course. Um, always raising three and a half, always raising three, irrespective of your position. Uh, like I said, I'm mean, just keep it consistent, uh, especially in the beginning. Good. So it's folded around, and we get one cold caller. And flop hits. And yet again, uh, another set here. And of course, guys, this is not always going to be the case. You're only going to hit your, your uh, setter better with a pocket pair. About seven and a half to one. So one time in eight and a half flops will you actually see that. The problem with this flop is it's two suited, right? And there's two Broadway cards. So two cards bigger than 10. And the fact that I raise under the gun is very often going to be also ace king, ace queen. Um, and my flop set here has lost a hell of a lot of value um, on this board. So, because he's going to put me on the ace of the, the queen a lot. And if he doesn't have one himself, then, yeah, we're pretty much probably going to be at the end of this hand. Um, so I check it, even though it is too suited, because I want to get some kind of action. I'm hoping for a check raise possibility here. Uh, dude is pretty aggressive here, 2.3 aggression factor. Um, and he's betting uh, versus a missed C bet in position on the flop, you know, 60% of the time, 58% of the time. Good. So I give him the chance to do so, and he does, which we're happy about. So he makes a solid, you know, three fourths, more or less, three fourths bet into us. And here you could even argue for a call. Now, that is dangerous again on these two suited boards. And that hence playing these kind of speculative hands in position because you can control the pot much better. So if I just call it, the spade hits, you know, what to do? Um, bet into it, represent the flush. Um, yeah, check it, maybe get pushed off of my set. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult out of position. So again, the adage, play in position as often as you can, especially with speculation, definitely applies here. So we decide, you know, it's too suited, and uh, he bets it, and we're going to stick with our initial plan. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, no, we did check call it. We check called the flop, and then bet the turn. So also, okay, also possible, check call the flop, spade doesn't hit, make a strong bet into the turn to push him off of any kind of flush draw. Um, thing is, I mean, King-10, of course, completed here. Um, and that might have been something that he would have cold called with on the button and then actively semi-bluffed after our check. So, again, it was dangerous play. Uh, it's something you can get away with from time to time. And let's see if he... Yeah, he goes ahead and lets it go at that point. So, yeah. Uh, way to change it up, uh, way you can play your sets out of position, also broadening your ra your range in early position with your middle pairs. Uh, again, not the f not the best thing to do on your first day uh, at the office, so to say, but as you get your experience and as you have history with different players, um, these are the kind of things that you should do um, to make sure that you know they don't put you on uh, five percent top five percent of all hands anytime you raise here from the first three positions. Again, pick your spots well, and on certain tables you can get away with murder. <laughs> Other tables you got to be really, really careful.